Hello and welcome. My name is Nilas and this is this fourth tutorial for advanced autonomous industries. Well, we've been uh, in the previous ones and I think we had to recommend you take a look at them. Uh, just the first one was basically the vehicles and the commands. The second one was the structures and how to build the logic. The third one was where we built some more advanced logics and started to do the resource allocation, the automatic resource allocation. I made a slight amendment since last time. I've added uh, two more blocks. This is the cleanup area. This is cleaning up the sapphire. This is cleaning up in terms of alien biters, the biters, because today we're going to actually work on the automatic biter killing. Uh, I will not use uh, these biters in this place because they are at evolution 99.99 something because it's about 200 old uh, playthrough. So there are tons and tons of behemoths, but the principle will be the same. We're going to build it and maybe at the end we'll send out some, uh, some suicide squad just to see how that works. Anyway, let's start by building it. We are going to build it um, and just, just to show how it works. This is a condition here on the, uh, the normal scanner. It looks for enemy unit spawner signal. And here I've, I've taken a look at it. We have found 58 of those. That's pretty good actually. So that's, um, that's very comforting that we've, it actually worked for that. And that's maybe what I would use it for was basically saying you can have a parameter control check thingy that uh, checks if, if by the spawn and then send automatic uh, runs out. Anyway, that's all what we're going to do today. Let's start by building some zone scanners because we're going to need it. Let's start with a zone scanner. And this will get an input. Well, actually, it'll get like a an input. This first will say, hey, that zone it should really be that one. But I do want to do something else because I don't want to send them out. I'm going to make some sample. Um, let's have this one. And for our test purposes, we'll call orange cross uh, orange circle. That is the biter signal. So that's the one we're going to do here. Biter signal. Biter signal there. That was a red circle there. And we put it in. Great. We have identified how many. We have nine of them. That makes perfect sense. Now I want to do a branch here into two different paths here. The first one is if this is zero. Uh, let's see, this is if that thing. Nope, 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 nope. If the number or the quantity of signal is equal to zero, that means there are no biters identified within our parameters. Then I will give you a signal of, uh, let's use a parking signal. Parking signal, that's going to be this thingy. That's a parking signal. Let's identify the parking signal. We're going to use you, you little chain gunner here as an example. You're a chain gunner one. Great. Go away. And I will make a parking signal. There. Wow, that's really hard to see. Maybe I should take something else as parking signal. Well, that one. An arrow up. And then we'll use the arrow up here instead. Purple arrow up. There. <laughs> Just, that can't be true. And this one will be different. This one will be saying if it's greater than zero, then I'll take everything I have because then I need the coordinates. And those coordinates will be processed out. First thing, let's link these. Which one's going to be? Nothing out and something else. Great. Now this one will then be output. Just kind of the usual thing here. Uh, next, actually, let's start with the top one. That will then use another zone scanner. Seems a bit excessive, but it's actually the right thing to do. Which will then say, hey, let's actually remove these. Then we go up on this one. This has an output. It has some coordinates. And then I'll take X and Y coordinates of this output. We have those from somewhere else. There. Just for reiteration. Basically just filters the X and the Y output. So we now have an X and Y output and that's where we're going to send unit controller. Send that to unit controller. 
Very, very simple. Done. And except for the fact that now I've sent here, but I haven't told which one it is. And that's where we're going to build something else. Um, first, I'm, I'm building something that doesn't make any sense at this point. But it will make sense in a bit in a bit of time. Why I'm building it like this. Um, here I'll have chain gunner ID one, and that will be just mark it up, whatever. It's actually, not the red signal. I need it to be a green signal. There. Is it moving? Yes, it's moving. Great. So it's moving there. So if there are no signals, it goes to the parking lot. That's great. Uh, what if there suddenly became a signal with an orange circle? There we go. Orange signal, circle. That one is identified. There. And we haven't built the logic for it. I was just like, why isn't it working? But that's because it ends here. What I just basically need is I just need to filter out. From here, just get in there. Right. I also have inputs and this will now I'm completely lost why it's not working. Here, here. Oh, of course, because there's no output. Silly noob. There we go. And then it's moving. Yes. It'll move to the top right hand corner. There. Cool. And if I remove him, because the alien is dead, it'll move back. So far, so good. That's actually working really well. Now let's make this more advanced. Because that's just one, and you don't want to send one in alone. Therefore, we are going to do to send concurrent commands. But I could build all of this for just one. That's not very clever, is it? What is much better is having an iterator down here. This will just watch what I'm building. I'm taking one T and putting it into. This is just the normal counter. T, the time is greater than zero. Oh, it's less than. How much do you want to iterate it? We want to iterate, um, I think I'll have nine. So, and I'll have it 10 ticks per, let's take 90. That makes no sense what I just said. This will rush, go through 90. Do we want 10? Now, hold on. I want, I want to stop, go back. I want to explain what I'm doing here. All right, so what I'm doing is I want to have this one count up to a certain number. And then I want to say, trigger this one and then send it in the next one, next one, next one, next one. In order to do that, I'll take this one and then I'll scale it up to, what should we say? We should say 180. And that will input the T. So this one counts up. When it gets to 180, it'll reset. Great. Then I'll do another one here. It basically takes the T signal we got and I'll divide it by 20. And then I'll put as T again. You can see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then count to 8. That I'll use to put into this one. This one is when T equal to 0. Then take all of the input. Goes here. And then I'll remove this one. Because that now comes from here. And just to check, this one is when... Hold on. Yeah, that's this one in order to make it simple, then I'll make it this is when chain gonna is greater than zero. Now I can copy this one. There. And these will be connected as well. There. And this one will be when it's one. Okay, why am I not getting this right? 
Oh, because this one is not linked. Oh my god, I'm silly. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. One. One. Gone. One. This one is two. I'm gonna see if it's there. Three. Somehow this is not really working as well as I'd hoped. One, two, two, three, four. Sorry, five, six. And the reason I do this instead of uh, just iterating on these is actually because I might want to control more types of ones because I could put in flame tanks or something else like that in nine eight seven six five four three two two one okay and this one also has to be mixed this is now going to be a two three this does take a bit of time. And four. Five. And this is, remember, this is zero indexed. So that's why it should go to six and go to eight in total. Seven. And lastly, eight. So there's a bit of work on this, and now I need to tie them together here. And also on this side. And then put it in. Let's see if it works. Yes, it does. Oh, look, they're all going to that location. However, that's not very practical because they're now piling on top of each other and it's not very efficient. That's number 10, that one. See, they're piling on top of each other. That's not good. So what I propose to do actually is let's have a look at this one. Let's first clean out that one and then we'll say the parking lot is now here there I suppose we could just say one two three four five then they'll go those locations yeah I think I'll do that as well so at this point I will actually as well saying you're going to parking lot one you're going to parking lot two yes this could have probably been done easier parking lot four parking lot five then they each get their own parking lots but the alternative is to do an offset where you basically in here you add some uh, coordinates to it it's a six did I get the five, six, seven? Um, but I don't particularly like that, to be honest. Because if I do an offset, that offset also applies when they're attacking. And that means that some will never get into combat because they are just offset too far. Or they will be rushing headlong into that. Now, again, this is then important that here, I will then change this to being input everything. Because I will then get... Uh, I will there what are we getting here yeah okay so only one of them you can't have the reason why there's no only one of them has an output is because there is only one of those you can see the type of signal would be so in order for that to work see they're piling up here I'm going to mark this as number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then they'll be they'll be slowly getting into their spots. They are not flawless. Let's be honest about this. They are not flawless in their pathing. Yeah, you're going there. But they're getting there, especially these ones. They're quite small hitbox. 
And if I then say, look, aliens right there, then they'll react. And then they'll start running in separate directions. And they'll just all slowly file over there. Unfortunately, they'll file in single file, but that's that's what it is. I, I have to do that. I can't send different signals to them. Or we shouldn't do it. And look, the danger is over. And then they go back. That's how, I, how it works. I could send them out into, if I change that signal, the only thing I need to do is change the signal to pink. And then the whole thing will come crashing down. Let's do that as the... Because now I'm going to send them out into the actual danger where they have no chance. No chance at all. So I'm just going to send them to one. I have no idea where it is, but they're going to get slaughtered. Do you even have ammo? I mean, if you don't even have ammo, this is not going to end well. So in this, uh, while we watch these uh, poor guys get slaughtered, they are now heading to some kind of base. And you can see they have a tendency to go through that the forest and that's not working but they do cut down some forest anyway let's recap what we learned we learned that it is possible to control the army they now have a parking lot and if i just go up here and say that one go away that's no there and go there then they'll go back then they will start heading back and that's probably a good idea oh let's hope they don't aggro so they would just start heading towards some random one oh don't go so close don't go close Anyway, and they will head back to the base and park in their respective parking lots. It's quite important to use this uh, parking lot because that's the way that you mark where they'll stay. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, the blueprint will of course be available as usual. This blueprint, I will also amend this part. This way of cycling is extremely powerful because then you can have, for example, in this case, all of your miners assigned by only one uh, one unit controller and that's way more efficient the same as same as this one way more efficient okay so hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something um and thank you for joining see you next time bye